you're looking for your first Japanese knife. You are super excited about the prospect of owning uh, an amazing kitchen knife, but you are getting a little bit confused and uh, frankly frustrated with all the new terminology and language that you're encountered with. In today's video, I, Gage, from Sharp Knife Shop, am going to help you decide on your first Japanese knife. Stay tuned. <laughs> So why on earth would you go with a Japanese knife over say a German knife or any other knife from another nationality? Well, in our opinion and experience here at Sharp, uh, three main reasons. One, the steel that they use, two, the edge geometry, and three, the fact that Japanese knives are made to be sharpened and maintained over the long term. So uh, steel type is usually of a very high quality, means it's going to stay sharp for longer. Uh, edge geometry means that the knife is going to move through ingredients easier and uh, made to be sharpened and maintained, meaning they don't have a bolster on them. So as you sharpen your knife, the profile of that knife will be uh, not impacted by that sharpening. So step number one is deciding what maintenance level you are willing to undertake. Now this category speaks to the uh, composition of the knife or what steel it's made from or combinations of steel is it made from. So on one hand, we have stainless steels, which will not rust or discolor. On the other side, we have carbon steels, which will rust or discolor if they're not kept dry and clean. And then of course we have sort of an in-between option, which is going to be a combination of stainless steel and carbon steels. So to talk more about stainless steels, again, they will not rust or discolor. Of course, they are not stain proof or invincible. So if you really, really neglect a stainless steel knife, it can still rust. Now it's relatively safe to say that Japanese stainless steels with their higher carbon content are going to stay sharp for longer than a Japanese carbon steel. You are going to have a more difficult time sharpening a stainless steel than you will a carbon steel. And if we're comparing, say, a run-of-the-mill like Henkel that you have in your drawer that's made from stainless steel, chances are that guy is not going to stay sharp as long as your carbon steel. Now on the other side, we have carbon steels. Now these steels are generally regarded as having amazing edge retention, and they certainly do, but that is usually when we're comparing them to that crappy stainless steel knife that you have in your, in your drawer. When compared to like an R2 or a HAP40, uh, typically your carbon steel knife is going to require more frequent sharpening. However, every time you sharpen your carbon steel knife, you're gonna have a much easier time. It's going to uh, get that edge back really, really quick. Uh, and you're gonna have a really keen, nice, really sharp edge with uh, minimal effort. So now there is an in-between option, which is a stainless clad knife. Stainless clad knives are made by forge welding two pieces of stainless steel to a core layer of carbon steel. This gives us the best of both worlds, in my opinion, because we have the stainless steel protecting uh, the majority of that carbon steel. And then we have that carbon steel exposed at the cutting edge, giving us that uh, awesome uh, sharpenability and really good uh, edge retention. If you're interested in more detailed videos on each of those three composition styles, check the description down below. We've got videos on each. So with all of that said, you need to decide if you want a carbon steel, which will require more frequent but easier sharpening and could possibly rust, so it will require you to wipe it down more frequently, or if you want a stainless steel that will require less frequent sharpenings, that will be more difficult to accomplish, but your knife won't rust. Oh, and don't put either of them in the dishwasher. You've determined what maintenance level you're willing to undertake, so now we're on to step two, and that's choosing a shape. I'm gonna start with the uh, most versatile and uh, the shape that we would most highly recommend as your first one, and then move down the line into more specialized shapes. So we'll start with the Gyuto. The Gyuto is the Japanese equivalent to a Western style chef's knife, typically in the eight inch or longer range and is great for pretty much any task that you're gonna come across in the kitchen. Uh, it can be used in an up and down chopping motion, rocking motion, good for tip work, good for slicing. And because it's a little longer, it handles larger vegetables really well. It can be a little uh, too much and a little bit intimidating for some home cooks. So that's going to lead us perfectly into the next two shapes we'll talk about, which are the Santoku and the Bunka. 
These two knife shapes are very closely related, basically the same shape. The only real difference is the shape of the tip. The Bunka has what's called a reverse tanto or K tip on it, which really is mainly an aesthetic feature. But I do find uh, personally that when I'm doing tip work, having uh, that uh, K tip is really helpful. It gives you a little bit more travel or, or, or control. Um, with your guide finger over that part of the knife. The Santoku, the word, translates to three virtues, which refers to slicing, dicing, and chopping, or meat, fish, and vegetables. Very versatile knife, more geared towards the home cook because it's a little bit shorter. Uh, same could be said about the Bunka. Uh, so both great options if you find the Gyuto or Aiden Chef's knife to be a little bit too long. Next, we've got the Nakiri, and we are starting to get into things that are a little bit more specific with the Nakiri. Uh, and that's because the Nakiri is actually meant uh, just for up and down chopping and for use with vegetables. A uh, nice flat profile means that when you use that up and down chopping motion, almost the entirety of the edge is contacting the board, thereby eliminating those little stuck together pieces that can happen with a big curvy blade. The uh, flat spine can be used to scrape stuff across the board and the large surface area is great for picking vegetables up. So great for vegetarians and vegans that are typically just cooking with vegetables. Next, we're getting into the specialized shapes. So we'll talk about the uh, the Honeske briefly is used for uh, poultry butchery. The Sujihiki is uh, used for slicing, uh, closely related to the Yanagiba, which is the single beveled uh, version, more traditional uh, sashimi uh, slicing knife. Uh, there's shapes like the Deba, which is used for breaking down fish. Now we can't forget about the petty knife, of course. The petty knife is not one that we would necessarily recommend as your first, as it is a little bit limited in what you can use it for. These knives are great to pair along with the Gyuto or the Bunka or the Santoku or Nakiri. They're great for working off the board in your hand, uh, doing uh, little, little intricate tasks like taking the tops off strawberries or Brussels sprouts, and they're great for butchery as well. So if you're looking for a second knife to go along with your first knife, a petty knife is a great option. We know the maintenance level, we know the shape we're going with. So now for step three, we're deciding what handle style. There are two main types of handles in the Japanese world, those being the wa handle and the yo handle. The wa handle describes a Japanese style handle, which is typically going to be made from a natural wood like magnolia or walnut. It will typically be octagonal in shape, but you can find them uh, oval and D-shaped as well. And they will typically feature a ferrule and a handle part, the ferrule being the top part of the handle. The ferrule is typically made from a more durable material because that's where you're grabbing the knife and will help the handle last a little bit longer. I personally really love the wa style handle or Japanese style handle. I find it fills up my hand really nice and, and feels super comfortable. The yo handle would be what the Japanese use to describe a Western style handle, which are those typically triple riveted handles uh, with a hidden tang in them that runs all the way to the butt end of the handle. It's hard to argue that these handles are not more robust than their Japanese counterparts. So step four, uh, this is a miscellaneous uh, free for all round. So a couple things to think about. Uh, find something that looks cool. A knife that looks cool and is visually appealing to you is gonna make you wanna pick it up and use it. Uh, and of course, the whole point of getting a nice Japanese knife is to use it. So find something that looks cool. So point four A is don't get too hung up on the specs of the knife. A lot of the times we can be shopping and we've uh, read all these blogs and watched all these videos telling you, you need to get Algami Super with a Rockwell hardness of at least 69, which is not possible, but uh, it proves my point that like, don't get too hung up on that stuff. Uh, a lot of the time, Jake made a great point when he's doing those roundup videos, a lot of the knives that he thinks he's going to like the least end up being like his favorite knives. So don't discount a knife just because of the steel type that it's made from or the Rockwell hardness. You uh, may really end up liking those knives. Uh, uh, step 4B. 4B. If you have an opportunity to go to your lo local knife shop and feel a bunch of knives, I would highly encourage you to do so. Even if it means you're going to buy a knife from someone else other than us, um, holding a knife and feeling it in your hand is going to be the best indication as to whether or not it's the right knife for you. Uh, now, it can be very hard to feel with your eyeballs. But if you don't have access to a local shop, we uh, typically do top-down videos where we hold the knife and, and talk about it for a brief two to three minutes on our website. So that's a great way to kind of 
in a sense, feel through us uh, kind of how the knife is going to feel and stuff like that. Uh, so if you have the opportunity, go through our website and check out some of our videos on this specific knives. If you're ever trying to decide between two or three knives and you want our personal opinion, never hesitate to reach out. Uh, we're always here to help, like I said at the beginning of the video. So give us a call at either location, uh, shoot us an email, we'll leave a link in the description below, uh, or use the live chat feature on our website. Step 4C, subscribe to our YouTube channel for more knife related content. Thank you so much for watching and until the next video, stay sharp.